All right, guys, I know you guys are itching to get onto the actual developing, but I did want to spend just a couple minutes to briefly go over our five general rules to color correction. This is going to help you guys to not only be more efficient, but to make sure you guys get a better product from your images afterwards. Um, so number one, the first rule is to calibrate your monitors. Uh, there's lots of great calibration devices out there. In the article uh, on SLR Lounge, we're going to actually list out our favorite calibration devices uh, along with the ones that we presently use, so be sure to check that out. And be sure to calibrate your LCDs or your monitors frequently because LCDs and monitors can actually go out of calibration every 30 to 60 days because brightness levels will slightly change based on the uh, age of a, an LCD or a, a monitor. So go out and make the investment to get a calibration device. And I would recommend that you guys get a device that will actually work with multiple monitors on the same computer. That way if you have, say, two computers, two monitors hooked up to the same computer, each one can have its own calibrated profile as opposed to only having one of those screens being correctly calibrated. The second rule to color correction is to work with a high quality LCD or a high quality monitor. Um, again, check out the article for specific recommendations, but we love using Mac, Dell, uh, Samsung LCDs as we feel like we get the best color representations from these uh, brands and models. Now if you can spring for an ultra-wide gamma LCD, then go for it because they do have a better color representation, but they are quite pricey. And for the most part, most of you should be able to get by just fine with a good quality LCD that's correctly calibrated. Rule number three is to work in a semi-dark area that specifically does not have direct light falling onto your screen. And the reason for that is basically if you're working in a bright room or if you're working with a, in a room that has direct light falling on your screen, it's going to be really difficult dialing in the correct exposure settings. In a bright room, something might look correctly uh, color corrected, but when you go into a darker room, you're going to see that you accidentally blew out some of the, the highlight tones in that image because it didn't look bright enough in your bright room. So I, I highly recommend that you guys work in a semi-dark area, specifically an area that doesn't have direct light falling onto your screen. The fourth general rule is to start from the largest adjustments and work to the smallest as you're making develop setting changes. And I'm going to show you guys specifically what I mean. I'm going to go in the develop module by hitting D on this image. Now in this image, the largest adjustment that needs to be made is probably the brightness slash exposure adjustment as it is fairly dark right now. Um, at least the subject is fairly dark. Now if I were to go along and make, say, changes to the blacks, uh, one of the smaller adjustments, I might think that at this level of exposure the blacks look okay, but when I brighten it to where his skin looks correct, that level of blacks is probably going to be off. Same with uh, temperature. So for example, if it's darker like this and I adjust the temperature based on what I think looks correct, when I brighten it up, I'm going to find out that, hey, that's a little bit too warm for my taste and I'm going to have to make adjustments. So say uh, making the largest adjustments first and then working to the smaller adjustments is going to make your uh, developing process much more efficient as you won't have to be going over the same adjustments multiple times as you make those larger adjustments. Now I'm going to reset what we just did and the last, the fifth general rule to color correction is to keep in mind that color correction is about getting an accurate color representation from a specific scene but there is still a lot of room for subjectivity. Um, some people might want their images slightly warmer, some might th want them slightly cooler, some might want more blacks and contrast, and some people might want less. While there's definitely a wrong way to color correct, there can be multiple right ways of color correction. So just keep in mind that there is some level of subjectivity. I am using a spider calibrated screen. Uh, so if you guys are using a different calibration device or an uncalibrated screen, what you see is going to be, uh, it can be a little bit different or quite a bit different from what I'm seeing. So color correct on a calibrated screen and kind of use your judgment to uh, what you feel looks right based on your taste and preferences. Alright guys, let's move on.